Hi everyone, it's Camille. And if you are new here, I would like to welcome you to my channel where we focus on creating real world applications in Elixir. This video will be a teaser slash refresher of what we have gone through in the last 15 episodes. It contains a fully functional trading bot written from scratch, but it lacks of some in-depth explanations as well as some features that we gone through in the episodes. Links as always are available in the description below. Please remember to drop a like and subscribe as this helps to grow this channel. Enjoy! Let's kick off our project by creating a new Umbrella application together with a new streamer app inside it that will be responsible for streaming trade events from the Binance API. Next we will create the Binance streamer module which will utilize the WebSockX module to deal with streaming data via WebSocket connection. In its readme it describes how to use it. I will add link to it and all the other links in the description below or possibly on the screen just to make it more convenient. We will use the Binance WebSocket docs to retrieve all the information regards the stream URLs. We will also parse incoming JSON data using the JSON module and convert it to the trade events tract that we will create next. The trade events tract will consist of all the fields streamed from the Binance API. Before checking does it work, we need to remember to add both the WebSockX and JSON as dependencies of the streamer application. We can now fetch those dependencies and test the Binance streamer using IEX. As we can see, our app receives and logs real-time trade events from the Binance API. At this moment, whenever an error will occur, our Binance streamer process will die and it won't get restarted automatically. To fix that, we will introduce a dynamic streamer supervisor, which will monitor and restart processes for us. Behind the scenes, we will also leverage the Elixir registry, which will keep track of the process IDs associated with symbols, which will allow us to implement functions to start and stop streaming. Utilizing the Elixir registry will require changes to the Binance Streamer module which will now pass a special tuple to indicate that starting the process should be managed by the registry. Before retesting our implementation we need to add the dynamic streamer supervisor together with the registry to the application's children list. Here we will tweak the supervision strategy to the rest for one as whenever registry would die we need to bounce the dynamic streamer supervisor as well. For the convenience of use, we will add start and stop streaming functions to the streamer module. Time to see it in action. Inside the IEX session, we will open an observer where we will see streamer app's supervision tree and that the streamer process gets started and killed whenever we start and then stop streaming. Okay, this will take care of supervising our streaming in case of errors, but what about complete power failure like a power outage? After the server will be brought back up, streaming won't be able to start it. To fix that, we will add a Postgres database together with a settings table that will keep track of the symbols with streaming enabled. We will fetch that data and auto start the streaming processes on the initialization of the server. We already added the Docker Compose file as well as Ecto to the dependencies of the streamer app. We followed up by fetching those dependencies and generating a new streamer repo module. We can now update the config and tweak the supervision tree to start the Ecto repository process which will require additional supervision level. The current children list of the application process is supervised using the rest for one strategy, but for the repo process we will want to use one for one strategy. To fix that we will introduce a new supervisor that will now be responsible for monitoring all the current children of the application. We can now generate the migration that will create the settings table. It will consist of two columns, ID and symbol. We will also assume that streaming is enabled for all the symbols listed in that table. To be able to retrieve the data from the settings table, we will need a schema module which we will create right now. We can now update the dynamic streamer supervisor to provide a function to auto start traders based on the database records. We will also create and delete those records when we are starting and stopping the streaming. We can now add a task that will run the auto start streaming function on the initialization of the supervision tree. This finishes the auto starting streaming feature which we can test by enabling streaming on the symbol, quitting the IEX session and starting a new one. We should see that streaming got started on init.
As we now confirm that the streaming works as expected, we can set up the logging level to info and add pubs up to the project to be able to broadcast trade events to other applications in the umbrella, like our trading strategy that we will focus on in the moment. For our trading strategy, we will create a new app called Naive inside our umbrella project. We will start with a single process called Trader that will subscribe to the trade events pops up topic and it will place orders below the current price and then sell orders based on the expected profit. We will provide a helper function to generate the initial state of the trader process. The function will make a request to the Binance API to retrieve tick size and step size that the trader will need to calculate valid price and quantity. It will also have a hard-coded configuration that we will update later. We can move on to implementing the callbacks that will be triggered whenever the trade events get broadcasted to the trader process. The first callback will pattern match the fact that we didn't yet place a buy order, so it will place one based on the current price and the buy down interval. Both price and quantity are calculated separately and we need to make sure that they are valid amounts. The second callback will check is incoming event filling the buy order and based on the executed quantity we will decide has the buy order been filled already and if that's the case we will place a sell order. The third callback will check is incoming event filling the sell order and based on the executed quantity it will decide has the sell order been filled already and if that's the case the trader process will stop running. And finally, the last callback will ignore all the events that weren't matched by the previous callbacks. Before we will see the trader process in action, we need to add the required packages to the dependencies of the Naive app and add the Binance API and secret to the configuration. We can now confirm that our trading strategy works by starting streaming and trading on the same symbol inside the IEX session. We can now upgrade our trader process to source configuration from the database. This will allow us to specify trading settings per symbol. We generated Ecto repo module and added Ecto to our application's dependencies. We need to update the generated database configuration to point to our Docker Postgres instance and generate a migration that will create the settings table for us. Then we only need a schema module to access the data stored in the database. We'll now write and run script that will insert default trading settings into the database. Instead of updating the trader process to use the data, we will focus on introducing a supervision tree around it. At this level, our supervision tree will look completely different than the one in the streamer application, as we will introduce a new process called the leader that will track the number of trader processes running in parallel, as well as their state. We will also move the logic responsible for creating the initial trader state to the leader, where we will use the settings from the database. To be able to start multiple traders, we will introduce the rebuy interval, which will be a percentage that price needs to drop below the buy price to start a new trader. Traders will notify the leader that the rebuy level got reached and the leader will then start a new trader process. To avoid multiple calls to the leader after reaching the rebuy level, each trader will hold a flag indicating was the leader already informed about a drop in the price. 
Inside the leader we need to handle notifications from the trader about the state update and rebuy level reached. We have set up trader to temporary restart which in a nutshell means that the dynamic supervisor won't handle trader restarts for us in case of errors. That means that the leader will be responsible for monitoring and because of that it will receive messages that the trader is down either because there was an error or trade has been finished which will be indicated by the normal status. So the leader together with the dynamic supervisor will allow our strategy to trade using multiple parallel trader processes on a single symbol. We'll now add the dynamic symbol supervisor which will allow us to start and stop trading on multiple symbols as well as auto start them. In the same fashion as in the streamer application we will leverage the elixir registry behind the scenes to keep track of the processes and symbols associated with them. The difference here will be that we will update the records in the database instead of removing them as in the streamer application, we need to introduce an additional top-level supervisor process that will monitor the traded symbols registry, the dynamic symbol supervisor and the auto start workers task. Finally, we can modify the application module to start the top-level trading supervisor process and update the naive module with some start and stop trading interface functions. This finishes our basic implementation. We can now give it a spin by starting streaming and then trading on a symbol. We can see that the bot executes full trading cycles and it's making a tiny amount of money in the process. This finishes the basic implementation of the trading bot, but it lacks a lot of crucial features like backtesting and there's a lot of things that we could improve on. If you like the content, besides smashing that like button, don't forget to check out my other videos that go in much greater details over the things like architectural decisions as well as Elixir and OTP. Alternatively, I released an ebook version of, of all that content available online for free on the website which I linked in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to stay on the top of the new videos and see you in the next episode.